After the explosion, they came to rescue the people, and of course, none of them survived. Marine is what happened here. They must all have been so scared. So, <laughs> lady. My mouth is so numb. Wow. Uh -huh. Good morning. We are Silky and Kieran, and we are on our 10 year honeymoon trip around the world. Yep, and it is another cold, cold morning here in Las It might not look like it, I'm out in t shirt, <laughs> but this is like home to me. Uh, it feels good. But um, we have woken up in a small village in Laos, and our first stop is Tampu Cave, which is a really um, vivid history which we are going to go into very soon. But first, as always, Brecky, we're going to the market, yep. our favorite place. <laughs> this market has everything from clothes to tobacco, plants, seeds, food. Yeah, if you need a tiny little jumper, this is the place to come. It's got cute dogs. So, usually in the morning, we have sticky rice with some fermented veggies um, or, or fried stuff, fried bananas, fried uh, sweet potato. Um, yeah, they're not the healthiest, but they're cheap and they're good, so let's see. They're in, in Laos, they use a lot of meat with everything. Meat or fish, so it's sometimes hard to find anything vegetarian. That woman's got good sales tactics. She had us her, if it wasn't meat, we would have invited her. She was yeah. just like waving the lid around, the steam's coming oh. out, and the bowels, oh. oh, wow. You know you have to save in Mexico, but then we talk chocolate. Oh. In the streets, oh my god. In some places, San Cristobal Las Casas, they sell hot chocolate in the streets, and oh my god, it's so good. And we have breakfast. Yay! Woo! We always bring our own little plastic bags. Uh, Whenever we remember, we try yeah, our best. We try our best. We are going to go back, have some brekkie, make a coffee, and then get ready to head the road. That, but those were um, okay, yeah. those were war trucks that are now used for yeah everyday use I guess transporting grains rice whatever um, it's just crazy to see them around here. So first stop today, Camp Pure Cave. Ticket price for Tampu Cave is 30,000 per person, which is around a dollar and a half. Yep, but it was really nice that we could also leave our backpacks mm -hmm. with the women in the restaurant and our helmets, so we just have the one little pack now. And um, yeah, let's go and explore the cave. Un? <laughs> Un? Yeah? Ah, no, normal. <laughs> During the Vietnam War, there was also the secret war going on in Laos and if you want to hear more about that, we have um, videos from Long Tieng, which was a place of significant importance there as well. Um, also the most secret place in the world. Yep. But Sien Quang was a super important place because of its geographical location, being on the centre of a crossroad between Laos and Vietnam, mm -hmm. um, and also in the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And a lot of the people here during the war moved into caves so for years they were living in caves some of the hospitals were in caves um, and I guess it's just because it's like the safest place to be it's actually it's really sad that a lot of the people they couldn't work the fields they, they yeah they couldn't really go outside a lot because of the amount of bombs and this was this place Shen Quan was was hit so hard. Yeah, Laos actually was the most heavily bombed country is, in the world. There were more the bombs on Laos during the Secret War than on the whole World War II. And we so, have just reached entrance of the cave. Uh, we learned that in this cave there are around 374 people living and um, they were here during the Secret War. And they lived here for, I think, around four years. Yep. They build up this whole um, community. Community. They had everything. Um, it was all in this cave, which I think is or was at that point around about a mile deep, but now is not because of the 
collapse of the rocks. But on November 24th, 1968, the US, searching for communists, fired four missiles. They fired three, which didn't hit their target, and one, which was a direct hit on this cave where they thought communists would be hiding. It turns out that 374 men, women and children were all civilians, so um, yeah, this is where that happened. There were no survivors, um, yeah. So what you can see is that a lot of stones here are just black, and I guess this is maybe where the missile hit, and then, uh, yeah, the big explosion. It's super crazy to think that this happened here uh, 50 years ago. This is probably from the war, from the, um, the time that the people were living here in this cave. I think it's, it's beautiful to see that people do just leave it. They, they don't take it, they don't um, remove it from the cave, because I think it holds a lot of the stories um, from the people that were living here from the time. That this was, yeah, where, where 374 people in the community were, were staying in refuge. Also, if you've, um, if you can imagine the blast, so the initial blast would have killed so many people, but a lot of people would have died from being crushed by the rocks. The force of the blast would have brought down so much of this rock. You can see this is all damaged. This is all um, broken rock from around, from the ceiling, from the walls, and that would have crushed a whole lot of people. Um, there would have also been people maybe further in the cave trapped because of this and they would have been trapped there and maybe died due to starvation later on and I think it's horrendous what happened here um, and this is what's left to remember it After the explosion they came to rescue the people and of course none of them survived um, but they found families, children in their parents arms um, dead they must all have been so scared and it makes me scared as well, just being here. Uh, we can't unfortunately show you with the GoPro, but um, these huge rocks are just above us and you see they've all fallen down. So people must have, must have been crushed here. And it's just, it's really scary. <laughs> I wonder how quickly people got here to start rescue missions. You know, I wonder for how long was it left after the, the missile hit? people would have started because it, I'm sure it would have been extremely, extremely dangerous for for a long time after the missile hit. Is it safe? To be honest, I'm a little bit scared. We're super far in the cave, it just goes on and on and on. It's a big, big, big cave and it goes from one place to the other. Huge spaces. Um, whew, and we're just exploring, but it also smells a bit strange here. It looks like the kind of place that people would have been dug out of because of the little crevices and the little pathways that seem to have been dug in all directions. It's crazy. I thought we'd reached the end, and then I looked to the right, and I see that the cave continues much further. And it's one of those situations that I don't know how much it's going to change, how, how different it'll be from what we've just explored, but you just can't stop here. You've got to keep pushing in just to see where, where it takes us. Even here, so far in, it would have caused so much destruction. Anybody here might not have been directly impacted by the blast, but I'm sure, I'm sure it would have been to do with starvation, lack of oxygen, dust inhalation um, that would have eventually killed them. So we're now super far into the cave, around half an hour walk. And uh, yeah, even here you see that everything is charred, all the rocks are black. I, w I was wrong. Uh, actually, I said maybe 
so deep in the cave it wouldn't affect uh, felt the effects of the the initial blast you know it wouldn't have had the heat but if you think about the blast radius on one of these missiles i mean in, in the open and like putting into a field you see the shock wave you see everything how far it, it it affects and actually if you can imagine funneling that this is essentially a funnel that's just funneled all of that blast everything to to shoot straight down into the back of the cave so i'm sure that actually death was pretty instantaneous for most of the people here because yeah even here like silka says the rocks are charred it's just chaos so yeah this would definitely be from when it happened all tin plates things even for cooking completely shredded torn to, torn to pieces reached the end of the cave and this um, used to be much longer but yeah of course because of the missile uh, everything has collapsed so this is the end wow super heavy you see it's burned It's hard to tell. Brilliant. It's hard to tell sometimes what's old and what's new. Unfortunately, it's there's a, a, a lot of litter here, like there is all over Southeast Asia. But um, but these are really. But that looks old. They're blacked. They're scraped. They're super heavy, which makes me think they're old. has been crazy he found a little hole on the side and he's now going in he says it goes far oh it scares me that's crazy in there so warm but it did stop just there it was like a little shelf of sandstone i don't know i don't know if someone would have used that space to be here We've been here for an hour and a half in this cave. Imagine living here for four years. Four years, that's a very, very long time. I mean, one year, two year lockdown was already way too much and that was in a comfortable house where he had all the comforts of home. Um, this is just insane. And then after those four years, a missile comes in and, and you lose your life. And we have reached the entrance. And it's funny because we also met a group. I mean, they're an older, an older group, but that's usually as far as people go. Just five the first, walk. not even five minutes. Uh, so this. Yeah, that's the entrance, and usually this is how far people get. As it gets scary after, like there's huge rocks and it's not an easy pathway. So. But we spent around about two hours in the cave, um, exploring different little crevices. And and I think it's definitely worth visiting um, because it's, a, it's got a, an incredible history, the, the energy, you can really feel it and yeah, I think it's worth exploring here. Yeah, definitely. And also just crazy to see that there's still so many little pots and dishes and yeah. shovels and stuff just there. It's a, it's a beautiful thing that you'll leave. After an incredible time exploring and adventuring in the cave and learning so much, we're now back on the road and heading north towards Namet Kului, which is a place which is
and that's why we needed to stop. Yeah, as I was saying before they got distracted, we're heading towards Named Pulue, which is famous for its night safari. And unfortunately, we did some research uh, a couple of days ago and found out that the tours are around about 4 million kip, which is... $200? $200, or I think it's 5 million kip for two people. And it's just out of our budget. Um, who knows in the future what we might do, but for now, I don't think. We're, we're going to drive past, we're going to see what we can see, see if there's anything beautiful because it is a national park. But I think that we will not be doing the night safari. Uh, I guess, like always, we just go with the flow, and there's always adventures happening along exactly. the way. Exactly. Woo! Wow, it's a very cold day wow. again. <laughs> also, because we're so high up, we're in the clouds now, which is. Uh, these are just the best moments, oh. passing those little villages, super local, all the kids outside, wow. It may be cold outside, but I've got a warm heart now. Oh. <laughs> what is this? In the clouds? Oh! It is so cold. <laughs> this is honestly the coldest we've been since Annapurna circuit in Nepal. Oh, wow. Yeah. Easy. Ooh. It is so chilly. Savaidi. Savaidi, Savaidi Bo. In Europe, you have those little cafes where you can go in for a hot chocolate. Oh. Just to, to warm up, but here you don't have that. Locals. Yeah, we saw the village, like the village kind of goes up this way and we said, so we said, oh you should fly the drone here. We pull over and the minute we get the drone out there was one kid, then there was two and then like a flood of them came round and I think uh, it was nice for them to experience it. Making sure we're not leaving whatever we could. Yeah, we point out all the problems. <laughs> The visibility is so low and it is so cold but I just know we've got to push on. And the sad thing is we know the drive is maybe three hours in total and if you look on Google Maps the road is just the same. It's little windy roads and probably in the mountains, in the clouds just like we're doing now. It's freaking cold, my god, last time I was so cold as a like, uh, half a year ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, oh. wow, the visibility here, look at that. 
ไปดิSo good now. Yeah, I'm uh, still struggling to talk a little bit, but last part of the journey must have been what half an hour. Yeah. I'm just downhill and I didn't move from one position, and that was not a good thing because I froze. My body was just stiff. I could barely move my fingers, and my face. I was just hunched like this. Oh. What's so now cold? Now we're out of the the mist, but wow, we we're in the clouds for so long for yeah. a few hours. Huh? Yeah. Have to be down. Oh. Each of the villages that we pass through, wow, they warm our hearts so much. All oh, the chicks are underneath the chicken. I want to be underneath the chicken. Oh. <laughs> Ready. We've been driving through so many tiny villages and every single person says Savaidi, they all wave, they're all smiling. Super they're happy. Such happy, happy villages and I think it, it warms us even more. You know, we've came from the coldest part of our journey in the last six months and now we're like, we feel super warm traveling through these villages, it's amazing. I also think we're almost at the town where we we're thinking to see. Um, just have to see if there's any guest houses. <laughs> yeah. We're tempted just to ask somewhere, um, any of these little towns. Um, and it is pretty tempting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> first kid who was successful. <laughs> Many have tried before, but that was the first successful one. Yeah. I'm looking forward to just getting in somewhere. We both fancy omelette tonight, just some kind of omelette. We had sticky rice from the village. <laughs> we asked if they had food and all they had was sticky rice and we weren't going to buy it, but then we felt bad. We thought, oh, let's just buy it. And So we've been like we for the last two hours with sticky rice in our... <laughs> My butt. <laughs> My butt, yeah, literally. <laughs> Big room, big bathroom, and most importantly, warm shower. We haven't tested that yet, but we shall update that later. And she also has a restaurant, and she said it's 30,000 for a big omelet. So, we're going for an omelet. In the meantime, I'm keeping our Kanyao secret rice warm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So let's go and have a walk through the village because it looks like a beautiful place. And people were all happy and smiley and stuff. It's nice. Let's go. <laughs> we have arrived and it's already ready. So amazing. Ta da! This is big. <laughs> Yeah. 
It's still a little bit cold, but after a sticky rice and omelet, we're back in the guest house with some coffee. Oh my god, what a way to end the evening. This is the best. Yes. <sighs> anyway, guys, if you like this video or if you just like us, please like, subscribe, <laughs> and all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.